Hi, Stan. How are you? Hey, Keith. Doing well. Yourself? I'm doing well. You know, business planning, November, is the best time to do a business plan for the brokerage. We want our agents to have their own business plans, but the brokerage has to do the heavy lifting for creating the vision of 2022. Uh, and I saw what you put together, and I think it is very useful, insightful, thoughtful. It takes time to work on it, but let's go over it. Let's explain to everyone what is a 2022 brokerage business planning and activity checklist. So step one, why don't you tell them a little bit about you, my friend? Sure. So I'm Stan Bishop. I'm one of the mindset trainers for Exit Realty, and I really focus on broker coaching and helping brokers be strategic in their planning and building their brokerage within their marketplace. My background, I have an MBA marketing management degree, so I bring to you a different perspective. I've, all, I've been in your uh, position as a broker, ran an Exit Realty franchise, and I love just helping brokers succeed. Well, um, my name is Key. I'm a mindset trainer, just like Stan said. I focus on production, agents production, more specifically prospecting, time blocking, and how to succeed at running a business properly. A lot of our agents are talented, but they don't have sometimes the systems, the mindset, the script, the preparation to get the listings they deserve. And this is a business of listings. Yes, we work with buyers, but listings matter. So I am an activity coach. Uh, I don't just teach you how to think about something. I nudge you to take action. And action for me is where the rubber meets the road. That's really where everything happens. So let's start with your business plan. You put together this uh, activity checklist. Can, can you give people a sense of what you do with the 2022 business plan? Yeah, so with the business planning, what we want to do is we want to look back at historical data, and we're going to gather that data going into the memo, going to MLS, pulling your P&L, looking at your income statement, your balance sheet. And with this information, we want to be strategic about what we should do next year based on what's working, what's not working, and how we can improve our business. Um, every year, this should be a process that you look at your company in a, a global sense that you can understand where you stand and how you need to improve your business to reach that next goal. So you're taking the first 10 months of this year, 2021, doing an assessment on it to see what worked, make a list of it, what didn't work, make a list of it, but also the blind spot, the things you may not have looked at and you need to enhance. And the first step is gather the information. Like we said, memo, uh, MLS, uh, you know, your QuickBooks, your taxes, you, you, all of those things that you have on hand should paint a picture for what happened this year. Then you have an interesting thing. You have them divide them into three things, right? Yes, yes. So when you're looking at everything you've done this year, obviously there's things you did really great. Well, we want to replicate those things next year. We want to continue along. So you're going to look at each part of your business, what worked. Let's plan to do that next year. But then we also are going to have a list of things that didn't work. And those things that didn't work, either you're going to change it or you're going to just stop doing it. And then there's going to be a list of items that you wanted to do this year that you didn't accomplish that you want to implement for next year. So these are the new things that we haven't been doing. And as a broker, we got to constantly be approving what we offer our agents, because if we do, then we're going to be having the best product out there, which is going to attract more agents and keep agents and get them more productive. Um, so with this evaluation, we want to be strategic on our decision making so that we're not just making decisions based on numbers, but we're making decisions on what actually is working versus what's not. And you break it down. So you mm -hmm. break it down into different areas and you actually put together a PDF where you take every aspect of the brokerage and you slice it up. So why don't we show them that slicing? So here's the PDF that you put together, Stan. Uh, it looks like this. So uh, the header, gives you a sense of what you're going to do. And then you start with training and you divide it into three sections, correct? Yeah, and, and so, you know, this all should accomplish, be accomplished over a three day period. That, that's what we always did as, as a brokerage partnership. And we took about four to five hours per planning series. I would never start with the financials first. Most brokerages, this is what they do is they go right into the financials and, and they're not as creative. They don't allow themselves to really think in a way that is not 
uh, hindered by the numbers. A lot of times we, we limit our thinking or possibilities because we're just looking at the numbers. Instead, what I would do is, let's say today is our first day, we're, and we're going to be going through our training program, and you and I are running a brokerage together. We would pull together. We'd already have the training calendar for the year. We'd already have the monthly calendar for the year, and you and I would both know what was working, what wasn't working. So we go through each month, January through November, and we look at the activities, look at the meetings, look at the trainings, and you know, Key, which one did you find that had the most attendance, that was most impactful for the agents? Well, let's keep doing that one because obviously it's working. And then remember those trainings that we didn't have anybody follow up with and, and we didn't see that we had the crowded and we weren't getting the results right. we wanted? Well, we're probably going to stop doing that. And then there's that list of ideas that we wanted to do this year, but due to circumstances, you know, with what's going on in the marketplace or maybe I didn't have the resources or the, the money or the capital. Now I can do it for next year and I want to implement that next year. And this, when we're doing this and we're going through and we're looking at what's working, what's not working, and what do we want to do next year that we didn't do this year, there is a financial component attached to it. Because if you're going to be offering a training, if you're going to be offering something where you're bringing an outside trainer like he, you know, you have some really good prospecting uh, boot camps that brokers can hire you to come in and do these trainings with, well, there's a budget that I need to tie to that. So I need to make sure I financially have that set aside. And then if I do that, when I get to the last day, which would be the budgeting part, we've already determined what we want to do for training purposes. Now we can take those money items and budget it for it accordingly. And we don't want to budget it for the year. We want to budget it in for the month in which we want to do that activity. So I always start with training. Um, training, I'm looking at my new age orientation, my onboarding, my ongoing training. The second thing I always do is I go into the support side. And support, you know, there's a long list of support items. First off, it's it's your, you know, staff. Maybe I have the wrong people in the wrong seat. Maybe I need to hire another person. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm working with brokers, they'll say, well, I want to hire someone next year. And well, when do you put that uh, budget item in place? Well, the person says to me, you know, I want to start them off in July because I need them, you know, to be going in July. Well, you don't want to hire someone in July if you need them working for you in July, if that's going to be your busy month. You're probably going to want to hire them in April and train them so that they're ready for July. Well, you're not going to budget them for January because you're not going to have them in January. You're going to budget it for April so that when you do need to hire the person, you have the money set aside. Um, when I look at support, I'm also looking at the office location. I'm looking at the layout of the office. I'm looking at the furniture. I'm looking at the technology. I'm looking at the paperless solution. I'm looking at everything I offer an agent from a support standpoint, what's working, what's not working. Um, some of the things that's not working, it might have a budget item tied to it. And we're gonna move the money from the thing that's not working. We could put it in our pocket. Now we're more profitable next year. We could take the money and put it into the things that's working. So we're gonna get a better return on investment. Or it might be money that we move into the item that we're not currently doing this year, but we want to do it next year so we can repurpose that money for that new item. So support is a big part of that decision making. And when you're evaluating this, you know, you want to look at it from an agent perspective. What is the agent looking for in a support standpoint and how can I provide a better product? And when we do this, then we're going to, again, track more agents, keep the agents in, and become more productive. After we're going to support, we're going right into marketing. Marketing, oh, yeah. I'm breaking down agent branding. I'm looking at the company branding, marketing purposes. You know, what do I offer agents when they join the company? Business cards, name tags. Maybe I want to keep doing it. They want to add something to it. Um, what am I doing from enabling agents to get listings? You know, you talk about it all the time. Listings is the lifeblood of this business. And if you're not getting agents out there listing, then you're, you're, you're missing the opportunity. So for as brokers, we can enable agents to be more successful by providing them some marketing assistance. Um, I'm going to tell you, though, as a broker coach, if you're going to provide anything like a marketing or lead generation or any of these items, there should be a return on the investment. We should be able to track it and determine what's working, what's not working based on that return on the investment. So we're going to you know, keep doing the things that work, stop doing the things that don't work or repurpose the money. And then we're also going to add things that we didn't do this year that uh, we want to do next year. And I can just remember as a broker, um, you know, I, I thought I had the best marketing plan when I became the real estate company for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'll never forget my top agent saying to me, well, what are you going to do next year? Well, we're going to be, you know, the real estate company for the Jaguars. I said, well, you did that last year. What's, what are you going to do new? So every year we have to constantly be bringing in new items because agents are looking at us as, a, as an organization. If we're not growing in each one of these departments, 
they think there might be a different, you know, better option out there. So I want to continuously improve. Once we go through marketing, um, we'll, we'll go into lead generation. Um, and, and I know this is a hot, hot topic for you. Um, chime in at any time, Key. But, you know, for me as a broker, I want to see the CRM. I want to look at, you know, what's working, OpCity, Zillow, Realtor.com, where I'm spending money, where I'm getting good return on investment, what's not working, I'm going to stop. And what I'm not doing this year that I want to do next year, th that I'm going to budget money for that. And you may have to also uh, infuse it with some training, continuous training and reminder training, because with lead generation, at the beginning when they learn how to use, let's say, Boomtown or KV Core, they have a good starting point, but then they need every two to three months a refresher, a way for them to go, yeah, I'm not doing this enough. I'm not doing that. I'm not making my notes. I'm not marking my leads. I don't know how to look at my leads on my, on my smartphone. So there is always a topic of continuing training with this, doesn't it? Absolutely. And that's where, you know, looking at what resources you have as a trainer, as a broker, that, that you want to be able to provide that assistance. To the agency. If it's not something that you can do, you feel comfortable as a broker, then hiring an outside trainer expert like Kia Saad comes in, does the training for you. He has a great boot camp. I highly recommend that. Um, so as a broker, that's what we're evaluating 100 percent. We're looking at what's working, what's not working. What do we want to do next year that we didn't do this year? And training for the purposes of, of lead generation is a big part of it. Um, lastly, we're going to look at the culture part and the culture. You know, this is one of those items that maybe this year you didn't do as many events within the community that you wanted to do. So this is one of those places where, you know, the budget didn't get spent this year. And now we need to repurpose money for next year because we plan to go full into the community involvement. We're going to have, you know, 10, 20 events. We're going to be doing career night. We're going to be doing an evening with exit. We're going to have, you know, community involvement with booths out there and, and agents can get in front of the community and, and pass out business cards and flyers and generate more leads. What's working? What's not working? And what do I want to do next year that I didn't do this year? So we're going to look at each one of those pieces. And again, if you're going to be doing events within the community, you need to have a budget item tied to it. So while we're going through this business plan and you're writing out all these items, you also should be tying numbers to it. You should be looking at the PL and see, well, where did I spend money? And I'm going to spend the same money in the same place. I'm not, do I need to have a different budget for next year? Once we've completed the culture, the training, the support, the marketing, lead generation, we then jump into the budget items. Now that you have this list of things that you want to do and that you, know, that you want to stop doing and the things you want to add, you now know, okay, let's go into the, uh, the revenue. Let's go in, and, and come up with a idea of a 10, 15, 20, 30% increase this year coming up over the, uh, or next year versus this year. Now, when you're looking at these revenue increases and these percentage increases, I don't just look at it and say, well, I'm gonna do you know, a 15% increase for 2022. I'm looking at each month individually. What was my revenue in January, February, March, April historically for the 10 months this year? And then I have to project out what do I plan to do with the increase year over year for next year, not just for the whole year, but for each individual month. That's going to establish a goal that I will have for next year to measure my success so that when I finish that month of January and I had a goal in January, I can reflect back and say, OK, did I hit my goal? Did I not hit my goal? And what do I have to change going forward if I did miss my goal? So I'm looking at my revenue. I'm looking at my expenses. You know, some of these expenses, we already know what the increase mm -hmm. is going to be. Yeah. You know, if you have a lease agreement, you probably have a, a built in, you know, two, three percent increase year over year. And maybe it occurs in June. Well, I need to add that increased expense in June if that's when that expense is going to hit. Um, I'm also looking at the the each item, you know, rent my staff. Again, we're hiring a new staff in April. So we need to add that expense in April if that's our plan. Um, we're looking at, you know, everything from lead generation because it is an expense, but it really is an investment that you should be getting a return on, on that investment. And then lastly, I'm going into the profit side. You know, so based on the revenue, based on the expenses, what is my profit? What am I going to project out there from a profit standpoint? And once we do this, we look at it on a monthly basis. We now have that goals that we can, that we can reflect back to. Um, agent count, monthly transactions. All of these should have year over year increases and we should have be able to track them individually each month. And then we should measure it, what's working, what's not working. Um, listings is another big one. And, and, and again, I applaud you 
and being a champion for the brokers to have the agents focusing on getting listings. And, and you know, when you're looking at your listing side, you know, this is one of those things that can really determine where you're projecting your, your business to go. Because if you're not growing listings, then other people are, are controlling the marketplace and, and it's not, not a good place to be in. And I know you speak a lot towards that. Well, one of the things that I like uh, brokers to do is to have the courage to look at 12 months of listings, look at the areas you service and ask yourself, what is the ratio? What is the percentage of our market share in, in, in terms of listings? And what can we do in terms of training, building the agent's confidence to go out there and get listings? The best time to get the listing, and you know this, Stan, is when you have a listing. When you have a listing in a particular neighborhood or two or three, that's the best time to get more listings. That's when the agent should be doing their local marketing exposure and getting more visibility for the future sellers. So... A listing should only be not only about the bottom line, how much money it makes you. It's about the signs in the yard. Every sign in the yard is a huge positive. Besides billboard, signs in the yard are the most powerful visibility for a brokerage. So, yes, uh, tracking your listing, where you're going to go and having a plan for it is really important. And this is why I love collaborating with you, because as he's focusing on the agents getting more listings, I'm working with the brokers to say, okay, let's focus on recruiting the agents who have the listings, which also compound the effect and help you with hitting that goal. So it, it, I love our one-two po- uh, punch when it comes to uh, valuing this. Agent productivity, you know, that's a very important number for me. I don't want to just have anybody join the company. I want agents to be more productive at my company versus wherever they came from. So I'm, that is an important statistic I'm looking at. What's my percentage of agents that are doing a transaction each month? And just like Keith said, I'm, I'm, I'm finding ways to impact that through training, through marketing, through support, through lead generation. Uh, my revenue, my net revenue per transaction, again, this could be looking at our ge- geographic area where we're focusing on. Maybe we need to be adding things like the luxury market, um, but we need to have a number that we wanna establish. And this is an important number for me for running a brokerage because if I know what my brokerage net revenue is per transactions, that will affect my decision making on whether I you know, implement certain tools and widgets that are out there that we're being sold constantly. Well, what's my return on my investment? That's going to determine what my average revenue is per transaction and how many transactions I can get from this type of widget or, or, or source that I might be implementing for the company. Um, once we've gone through the revenue, we've gone through the agent productivity you know, we have uh, an area here for notes and, and, and for you to reflect back because, again, I think this is an important time that you, you put these ideas together. And this isn't just a document we fill out and we put it into a file. This is a document that we're going to be utilizing throughout the year. Every month, we're going to reflect back to it and say, OK, are we doing what we said we were going to do? And it'll keep us on track to ultimately hit that goal or, or come very close to the goal that we set. So that's the purpose of this document. This is the purpose of the meeting. Um, again, most brokerages will fail um, at business planning because they only limit themselves to the numbers. They're only looking at the PL and they're not being as creative as possible and they're not expanding what they could offer their brokerage, their agents, their customers by looking at each one of these parts. So I, I challenge you to take the time, three days, that's all we're talking about, three days, you know, four to five hours per day. Um, last day is going to be the PL. First two days, again, we're going to evaluate all parts of our business and then we'll, we'll finish up the day with, with some uh, and, of the numbers. And we'll you do encourage them to go away. I've seen, I've seen teams yeah. like the brokers, the managers, and sometimes the admin, they go for, on a retreat for two, three days and they work on that. That's all they do. And they come back with a good business plan. They have now a vision for 2022. So I've seen people do that. Some of them do it at the office. Of course, you can do that. But why not you go go away? Why not retreat and kind of reflect on it? Uh, and I like the idea of taking three to four, like you said, two, three days, maybe four days, because, you know, the next morning when you wake up, other ideas are still percolating in your mind. So you don't want to shortchange this process. This is the most important process in creating 2022. Agreed, agreed, 100%. And as you know, in the, this is the document. By the way, 
that URL, uh, I'm going to show you that URL again. You can just go and download that PDF. And at the end of the PDF, there's even a flyer of what you and I do. Should yeah, we, yeah. Should, shouldn't we tell them about the 10 weeks? We should tell them about it. it, it it's a great uh, program. I, we were excited about it. We've done it four times this year, and we're getting great results from the brokers who are helping. Um, so for let, let's jump right into it. It's it's a 10 week program. Well, let me give them first the URL. Let me yeah, yeah. quick quick thing. The URL is very simple. It's bit.ly slash 10 WJM 2022, which is 10 week, January, March, 2022 for the year. So write that down right now. Pause this video if you're watching it, because that URL will give you everything you need. So I didn't mean to cut you off. Why don't you give no, them no. a sense of the of, uh, of the uh, program? So again, it's a 10 week program. It's for the whole office. You know, we purposely wanted to put a program together that, that can impact the broker and the agents at the same time. It's a one, two punch. And for me, you know, we're looking at the recruiting systems. We're looking at, you know, checklists. We're looking at the proper way to implement um, all parts of your business. And, and that's why we call it the whole brokerage, uh, the whole office 10 week program, because it is looking at all parts of your business and doing it strategically in a way that, you know, like you say, it's an actual change in your business. This is something meant to, as a workshop, that you're going to take this information and you're going to immediately apply it. So for me, I'm looking at the checklist. I'm looking at time blocking. I'm looking at uh, the, the follow-up system, the eight-step follow-up system. And my goal is to get brokers to consistently recruit agents in. I know if you want to grow your brokerage, you want to be successful, Ultimately, you have to grow the agent count along with increasing per agent productivity, which is where Key comes in, and he has a phenomenal uh, plan for the agent specifically. Well, let's give them a sense of how the system works. Yeah. So it is 10 weeks. Uh, every week, we alternate. Uh, week one, the brokers are with you. They're doing a coaching as a group with you privately. We usually take about 10 offices at the time. So we have 10 offices with you. The brokers and the managers are with you. The week after that, I come in and I do a session with your agents. It's also live. All of the sessions are live. So one week, the brokers are being coached. The other week, the agents are being coached. And I have focused primarily on prospecting and building confidence to get sales and listings. When you get listings, you get more sales. That is the path. Working with buyers is good, but it's not sufficient for a career. The, the sessions are about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Each session comes, uh, ends with an assignment. I give them physical assignments to work on, and so do you. And what we're trying to nudge them is outside their comfort zone. We want them to realize this is not an order-taking business. This is a prospecting business. This is where you go out there and get the business. You make it happen. All of the sessions are live. They start at 11 a.m. Eastern. We go to about 12, 12, 15. Here are the dates. These are the dates for the brokers. Uh, the first session is January the 12th. Then every two weeks, they're with you. My session starts on the 19th. And then every two weeks, they're with me. But with me, there's one more thing I do. Your agents, during the week when the brokers are working with you, Stan, they get an email from me of a video that they do on their own. They get a video with a handout that they watch on their own, and it helps them develop scripts. See, a script helps an agent build confidence, basically. If they know what to say at the door, if they know what to say on the phone, if they know how to introduce themselves and be calm, they actually do, they tend to ask for more business. And that's yeah. the business we're in. So we want them to log in at 10.45 a.m. Eastern, and we go for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, can you dig deeper on your topics? with the Yeah, so, so for, for us, um, what we're going to go over is goal setting. So we're going to come out for your plans for 2022. You know, what do you want to accomplish? And let's have measurable items in place for each part of your business so we can reflect back. So that's the first thing we do, business planning, goal setting. And then we're going to go into your recruiting system. What does your CRM look like? What's your value proposition? What's your scripts tied to different categories? What are the categories of recruiting? Do you have an eight-step follow-up system? 
All of this is going to be provided to you also as a follow-up email will be sent to you with a ton of resources so that you don't have to go out there and recreate the wheel. A lot of this will be complementary maybe to what you're currently doing at Summit. It will be something that you're currently not doing that you're going to want to implement in the future. So this is going to be very systematic, very detail-oriented, tons of resources, uh, very interactive. We're going to do a lot of role-playing. We're going to be you know, like he said, getting you out of the comfort zone because we know that's going to help you grow to get you to that next level where you want to go. And the topic I'm going to be covering, and I'm going to show them two things uh, as I do these topics. Um, I'm firm believer you start with mindset. If you have a prospecting mindset, if you remember that asking for business is a skill that you learn, you do better. A automatically, you do better by just knowing that. Then you have to time block it. You got to make the time to make the calls, my friend. You can't just wait for the phone to ring. It dials out. So you need to be dialing out. But the fear is, what do I say? We take care of that. We learn organic script. An organic script is a script that is non-salesy. It's a script of engagement. It's a, a script of service rather than manipulation. We don't do any manipulation in our training. We help people help other people with their real estate needs. We're going to learn how to phone Canvas. We're going to learn how to manage our leads. We're going to do a whole class on CRMs. We're going to learn how to door-to-door -door Canvas. Remember, notice I'm saying Canvas. I'm not saying sell anything. We are not soliciting. We are canvassing. The sale takes care of itself. And we got to have productive activities. Your good habits make who you are. So I'm, let me show them, uh, if you don't mind, Stan, uh, how I put the agents outside their comfort zone. So when the agents join our group, I take them to this special page. It's a Facebook group. It's a private group. And in this private group, uh, by the way, right now we have 128. So we're in the middle of a course right now, and we have 128 people that chose to do this. So what's in this page? Well, every week I give them a script. So the week, this week I gave them this script called the Huff and Puff. Huff and Puff is, what do you do if somebody says to you, well, I'm thinking about selling, but well, and they're hesitating, right? They're not saying yes, they're not saying no, they're hesitating. What do you do? So I give them a script and guess what? They come in and they actually practice the script and then they go online and record it so the other agents can see it and they can support each other. So notice how each agent is coming on and doing their script. And you'll see them reading, grabbing something to read. And th this one, uh, uh, Arlinda is working on her boss script. A boss script is how do you prepare your mind to run your business like a boss? So she was working on that. You have uh, Lori working on her just listed phone script. There's a script I taught them how to work on. I asked them to tweak it. And I can go on and on and on and on. And they, they start seeing themselves differently. They start mm -hmm. believing, yeah, I can do this. Uh, I, I'm not going to have a heart attack. I can do actually this. I can actually ask for business. I know what to say. So this is one of the things I make them do. And the second thing, before they join the course, I ask them to sign a pledge. Now, this is up to the broker. I don't make anybody do anything. But here's what I found, Stan. If they sign the pledge to become of the mindset of a listing agent, they already do better. So they take this pledge here, they uh, fill it out, they sign it, and they send it to their broker. Now you have a relationship between a broker who's committed and an agent who's committed. Will all of the agents in your office do this? Probably not. But when you have a few playing, the others start coming in. Like, what? I want to play too. Because everybody wants to belong. Everybody wants to be part of something. So that's what I have put together in my work with the agents. We always have about 100 to 125 agents in the class. They take it seriously. Uh, it's very rewarding to see them build their confidence. Um, and this is the part about the, the pricing of the course. Yeah, so for the 10-week program, the whole office... Uh, for both agents and broker involvement, the cost is $9.95. It's going to take you through you know, everything that Key and I said, tons of resources, tons of follow-up, ton, tons of interaction, role-playing, 
And for the cost of 995, I mean, it's it's to me the most affordable option as a broker if you want to provide a solution for both you and the agents. Um, it's a no-brainer. It's it's only 995. I. I really expect this to sell out for the year we're, we're planning to do you know multiple ones i would not wait um we've already got two people signed up i think we got two more I, coming we in. have a third one actually we have a third, third yeah. one yeah so, yeah so, so there is limited amount because we want to keep it intimate in the number of people who actually will be participating so we can you know uh, accomplish the role playing side so make sure if this is something you're interested in sign up now reach out to us if you have any questions you know, we want to get you there because, again, this is your plan to make you successful. Um, trust people who've been there, who've done it before, and that have your best interests in mind. You know, my focus is just on the broker side. Let me get you uh, more successful. Key does an amazing job with the agents, and, and it's, a re it's re um, refreshing to see the feedback and to see people who, you know, are actually doing what you ask them to do. You know, getting online to the Facebook groups and practicing the scripts and and getting outside the comfort zone is that broker. That was always a challenge for me. It was a challenge to get my agents to participate. And you've done a great job, my friend. Thank you. Well, uh, here's what happens when you register. Uh, you will yep. receive. Uh, this is what they receive from you, correct? Yep. Yeah, I'll send them an email uh, with a broker snapshot. And this is going to be a one-on-one uh, -on -one call that we're going to do to talk about your current business. So prior to going into the 10-week program, you and I, uh, myself, and, and the broker who's in the program, we're going to talk about you know your office, your training, your support, your marketing, your recruiting systems. We're going to talk about your goals. So when you go into the 10-week program, you have a sense of what we're going to accomplish. And I give you kind of that mindset training so that you get the most out of it when you do. The agreement will come to you. Um, there's an invoice of 995 goes through through PayPal. You can send a check in, pay it by credit card. Once you've registered, once you've uh, submitted your invoice payment, then your seat is locked in. Until then, you know it's an open seat and it's a first come first serve basis. And what I'll do also, I'll be working with you and your admin to onboard your agents. I'm going to explain to them the necessity and the beauty of that pledge. I'm going to explain to them why joining the Facebook group as early as possible and getting their book to read is important. And I'm going to help you put a roster. One thing I'm going to tell you brokers right now, do not worry if all of them don't sign up. Yeah. Work with the willing, the rest will come. And yeah. all you have to do is just ask them to come to the office. Say, what are you doing Wednesday? Come, Wednesday at 11, 11 a.m. We're going to do a class. I think you will you will benefit from it. Just come in, work with the willing. The rest will start talking between each other, and they will show up. Uh, the first day of class, that um, Facebook page had seventy five people. By the time I finished that class, we jumped to one hundred and ten very quickly because everybody realized, wait a second, this is different. This is not a webinar. This is an actual class where I'm learning how to do things, how to actually make the bread. So I will also be giving you, uh, we're giving you a bonus. We are still in that zone where the pandemic is still with us and, you know, we still have challenges with it. So um, a lot of you have resumed your training in your office, which is great. But you may have one or two uh, who are, cannot attend uh, in the class. We give each broker the main login plus five to give to your agents. So just know that automatically we'll get you one plus five. If you need more, you just call us. We'll try to put something together for you. So that's just to facilitate uh, your agents being in the class. But I must tell you, Stan, the best classes is when they're with me in a class, then they have a quick lunch or a quick uh, you know, sandwich or something. And then they start working the scripts together as the best implementation of the training because it's still fresh with them. And the broker is there and she sees what they're learning so she can put them to work very quickly and say, oh, you just learned the elevator speech. Why don't we practice it? Why don't we rec record each other? You record me and I'll record you. And that feedback loop is positive. And that's what I uh, encourage every broker to do. Uh, I need to stop talking. Here's what they should do. They can call us, right? 
<laughs> they could, yeah. Give us a call. Here's our cell number. Um, you've got the login for the information for getting more information on the handouts. Um, you know, guys, let's really focus on, on professionalism for next year in a way that we're strategic, we have goals, we have accountability measures in place, and let's provide the best support and training to your agents. You know, don't stop. Let's, let's go ahead and get signed up today. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stan, for doing this. Great information on the business plan. I know that uh, the brokers listening are going to download it and start working on it. And it's going to help them when they join this training because they will have it mapped out. So right. thank you for right. doing that. Good luck, guys.